Hello and welcome to another medical episode. Today we're talking about the Hutchinson Guilford Progeria syndrome, which is a disease where patients older prematurely and where they die at a very young age. We're talking about epidemiology, pathology, phenotype, diagnosis and treatment. But first, some background information. The disease was first described in 1886 by Hutchinson and a decade later by Guilford. And the name is from the Greek words pro and geras. Now, back to epidemiology. It's a very, very rare disease, affecting only about one in four million newborns. And usually it's caused by so-called de novo mutations, whereby de novo means that the parents are not affected, but that the mutation occurred within the baby. And usually this mutation is a so-called silent mutation. So the base is exchanged, but the amino acid stays the same. So here in this example, you get exchanged for an A, but still the amino acid is glycine. It's an autosomal dominant disease. This means that if one allele is mutated, then an individual suffers from HGPS. Now to the pathology. The disease causing protein is lamin A, which forms, among other proteins, the nuclear lamina. And the nuclear lamina is a protein lattice that gives stability and structure to the nucleus, as depicted here. The most common mutation, as said before, are silent mutations. Uh, but this exchange diminishes the second splicing site. Splicing is the process where the introns get removed and is actually a physical process. But as the second splicing site is no longer recognizable by the enzyme, prolamin can no, not be processed to lamin A, but rather stays a larger product called progerin. And this accumulates at the nuclear periphery. It's thought that this is the toxic compound. Then the cells get deformed and in general downstream signaling cascades are detrimentally affected. Most essential is the shortening of the telomeres, which are the ends of the chromosomes. This shortening is a physiological process, but usually occurs with advanced age. Now to the phenotype. So at birth, the newborns have a, well, let's say normal physical appearance. There are, however, first indications like facial cyanosis, which means that they are their face has a blue-violet color due to the lack of oxygen and they have a sharp nose. The children start to age rapidly from age 2 onwards and they have typical features which is associated with extreme age. So the skin is wrinkled, they have age spots, bone lesions and hip, hip dislocations as well as fractures. And they're smaller than children their age. Well, apart from those physical features, their behavior is not influenced and they act according to their age. The diagnosis, well, usually the physician suspects the disease because there is a typical phenotype, but a definitive diagnosis is only possible via genetic testing. The lifespan is limited to the teenage years or early 20s. Most of them die around the age of 13, mostly due to a heart stroke. Now to the treatment. So at the moment, no cure is available and the children have to be closely monitored, especially their cardiovascular condition. There is actually a drug that was approved by the FDA a few months ago, which is an enzyme inhibitor. And there are also potential future treatment options like gene therapy. The results of ongoing clinical trials will show their potential effectiveness. Now we've talked about HGPS, but there are also mutations in Lamin which cause other diseases like Emory Dreyfus, muscular dystrophy and lipodystrophies. So in general, we've got four clinical phenotypes which are associated with mutations in LM in the Lamin A gene. Accelerating aging disorders, lipodystrophies, neuropathies and striated muscle diseases. Another interesting aspect is that so far, hardly any mutations have been found in Lamin B, but rather in Lamin A. There are two possible reasons, which are that either those mutations haven't been detected yet, or that they might be lethal in embryonic stages, or also a combination of both those reasons. 
I hope this video gave you a quick overview of this disease, this horrible disease. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel to see weekly uploads. See you in the next video.